Hello friends, some regions in the world are suffering damage from invasive animals. They increase in numbers rapidly, destroying landscapes, crops, or even attacking cattle farms. So how can farmers deal with millions of these animals that are attacking their farms on a daily basis? Now let's see that in a video. Farm owners have teamed up with professional hunters to participate in trapping wild boars. There are farm owners who do not have much experience in setting wild boar traps. In the afternoon, the hunter will go to the field area to set traps for wild boars. When they reached the land area, they started building iron fences to trap wild boars. These iron traps range in height from about three to six feet. They will bring down the mesh frames around the trap and then begin installation. As you can see, the installation is quite simple. However, you need to install it correctly according to the steps above. Until the installation is complete, the worker will install the power line and recheck the joints of the trap. Once completed, the worker will rotate the winch to lift the lower body of the trap and install the remote control. In each trap, the center will be filled with the types of grain that pigs like to eat the most, and then we will wait for the results via camera. Likewise, traps can be placed near each other or in other areas showing signs of feral boar invasion. Let's watch and see how this trap works. You can also see that herds of wild boars are starting to approach because they smell the scent of agricultural products. They are too familiar with the smell of corn in the fields. Each herd of pigs entering will have the leading male pig, followed by the female pigs and their cubs. They are very numerous. You know, during each wild boar breeding season, each wild boar will give birth to about 12 babies per crop. Just like that, the number multiplied, and to date, the estimated number of wild pigs has reached 9 million. Back to the traps. When the pigs enter the trap, monitor the camera. If there are no wild boars around anymore, then the trap will be activated. Perhaps this is the moment you look forward to the most. The pigs ran and then hit the trap hard. The material used to make the trap was very sturdy, so it could block the pig's strength. Every year in the United States, wild boar trapping competitions are held. The contest will be held for a few days to a week. Wild boar trappers from all over come to participate in this contest. You will see the rewards right here. These are people who are very good and skilled at trapping wild boars. They have learned and accumulated experience over quite a long period of time. Vehicles carrying wild boars are parked around a yard. Each vehicle will be brought into the weighing area to calculate the total weight of the wild boar vehicle. The person with the highest number of wild boar weights will be the winner and will receive the contest prize. There are many of these pigs that are said to weigh 200 to 300 pounds, a fairly large mass to be ranked among the top giant wild boars.
When they were awarded the prize, they said they had been waiting for the contest to take place for a long time. This is also a competition organized for entertainment and to encourage contestants to practice their wild boar trapping skills. In addition to trapping wild boars, hunting is also one of the ways to deal with wild boar invasions. The hunters will gather together and begin their hunting journey. They will learn together and go to a land where many wild boars live. Of course, they will hide in hilly areas. They will go to the highest areas on the mountain and use lenses to observe areas with wild boars. When discovering wild boars, the hunter will calm down and aim at their heads to shoot. This is the point where the wild boar becomes paralyzed and faints immediately. In field areas, hunters will lead hunting dogs to search for traces of wild boar. To be able to have these hunting dogs, hunters had to train hunting dogs for a long time. Furthermore, this breed of dog is also very expensive and difficult to buy. Hunting became easier with the support of companions and hunting dogs. Just like that, until the end of the day, they will collect all the wild boars and return to celebrate. It is estimated that every day in the United States, about 4.5 thousand wild boars are hunted. This is a small number compared to their numbers in the United States. There are hunters who specialize in hunting wild boars from afar. This hunter was in the mountains and shot a wild boar at a great distance. He was very confident with his hunting equipment and made sure to shoot wild boars. Let's take a look at his skills. With just one shot, the wild boar was immediately knocked down. I couldn't believe my eyes. This man chose a high and remote position to be safer and to easily observe wild boars. The times that followed surprised me. His vision and observation are very quick and accurate. The wild boars he saw were all brought down by his skill. Any animal that appeared was attracted. Even the coyote was captured by this hunter. Their comrades also returned and harvested their spoils. It's amazing to have these skills. Now we also come to a new area to experience even more wonderful things. Livestock work is not only affected by mammals such as hares, wild boars, or rats. Every year, Australian farmers and ranchers suffer significant damage from millions of wild birds of the parrot family. There are currently 56 species of parrots living in most areas of Australia. With an estimated population of more than 17 million, of which are gala cockatoos, sulfur cockatoos, rainbow lorikeets, and macaws. And here are some of the most popular parrot breeds on the continent. There are flocks of parrots that number in the tens or even hundreds, and they can appear wherever you live. In addition to making annoying noises, they can also damage crops such as cereals, fruit trees, and seeds. In addition, 
Parrots can also nest in inappropriate places like your roof cavity. Dozens of parrots in the backyard also cause pollution due to the hundreds of piles of garbage they leave behind. These are not Gala cockatoos, but they are believed to be the most numerous of all parrot species living on mainland Australia. In the wild, Gala is found in a wide variety of habitats, from arid hinterlands to dense forests. In addition, this bird is also commonly found in the inner and outer areas of cities. This is a cattle ranch in Maranoa County, southwest Queensland. Around the area is also home to a flock of Gala cockatoos, with a population of nearly 300. The Gala cockatoo is usually a herbivore and nut. Every day, hundreds of Gala often fly to this faraway place in search of water and food. This variety is commonly used for livestock and includes corn as well as several other grains. These noisy birds cause a lot of discomfort to the people working on this cattle ranch. They not only appear around cattle and poultry farms, but they also often form large flocks and fields of wheat or barley to feed. Gala is often attracted to crops that are in the milk stage. As soon as they find the area, these noisy birds may appear to eat some nuts. Imagine what happens when you have a field of wheat about to be harvested when suddenly, hundreds of Gala come from nowhere to enjoy your free meal in your field. In the northern parts of Australia, the breeding phase of the Gala takes place from July to December every year. And in the southern region, the breeding period of this bird usually lasts from February to July. The breeding season, parrots usually only have two to three eggs that are successfully hatched. However, when a young bird matures into adulthood, they can live up to 25 years in the wild or up to 70 years in captivity. If you start keeping Gala as a pet now, chances are you'll be the one to say goodbye to this world sooner than your pet. It is estimated that more than 4 million Gala live across Australia. This noisy bird costs Australian farmers about $173 million each year in damage to their crops. To control the Gala's parrot population, some localities in Australia have used measures such as hunting or trapping. All control measures must be in place in accordance with Australian wildlife laws to ensure that these birds are treated humanely. It is estimated that the introduction of the controls cost the Australian government almost $4 million a year. If you're an Australian like me, tell us about the negative impact parrots have had on your life. In addition to the Gallus cockatoo, the macaw is also a species of parrot found in abundance in Australia. And the negative impact this little bird has on agriculture in this country is significant. In the wild, macaws usually live in flocks of about 100 individuals. But the number of parrots in the flock can increase to several thousand after the rainy season ends. The reason the number of macaws in the flock increases rapidly after the rainy season, at this time the rapid growth of vegetation provides plenty of food and nesting material. As a small flock-dwelling bird, young birds have always been considered the preferred prey by birds of prey such as falcons. In most areas of Australia, 
macaw habitats are also home to flocks of falcons. However, with an estimated number of nearly 5 million. The impact of birds of prey on macaw populations in Australia is negligible. It is estimated that only about 1.3% of macaws in Australia die each year from the impact of predators and other factors such as disease or hunting. In most areas of Australia, the macaw's breeding season usually lasts from September to February of the following year. However, this bird can also stop breeding completely within a year if the weather conditions are too dry and there is a lack of nesting material. After about six to seven weeks, these chicks will leave the nest after each breeding season. The number in a colony of macaws usually increases to about 13 to 17 times the original number. Like most parrots in Australia, macaws also have a habit of eating nuts and seeds. A colony of hundreds or even thousands of parrots will cause significant damage to wheat fields or sorghum is about to enter the harvest period. In addition, fruit farms such as bananas or mangoes are also a favorite place for a colony of macaws. In the wild, adult macaws need to drink water at least seven times a day. Therefore, small water holes in arid regions of Australia are often the place where you can easily catch the appearance of these little birds. In some cases, aphids damage crops or other resources. Landowners or Australian agricultural authorities may employ measures such as traps or shooting to control populations. Overall, the impact of the millions of macaws in Australia on agriculture is quite significant, especially on small farms. However, compared to other pests such as feral pigs or rabbits, the impact of parrots in Australia on agriculture is only a very small fraction. Are you impressed with this parrot? Leave a comment below to let us know. And now let's continue to watch the video together.